So, uh, good afternoon to all my friends here in India, and uh, good morning to my colleagues and friends in Israel. Today, we are going to conduct a webinar addressing a supering of beehive before honey flow uh, under our activity uh, on beekeeping under the Indo-Israel Agricultural Project. We are having a few uh, guests with us today, and uh, we will actually have Dr. Biel Sarawat from uh, Executive Director of NBB, National Bee Board with us. We will have Dr. Saini from uh, Director Ariana, and of course, Dr. Bilu, Project Officer for IBDC, our beekeeping center of excellence, one of a kind that we have in uh, India, and friends from across India that uh, see synergies in the activity of beekeeping. So we invited them to join. The topic today, the activity today will be conducted as a following. We will open with Chaim Efrat, our uh, Mashav beekeeping expert, that will actually take us to a field visit and uh, we will see uh, the activity, the management of a hive. I want to take one uh, or two inputs before we start. I would ask everyone to keep themselves on mute so we could hear each other. So what I uh, would uh, request is that everybody will keep themselves on mute. What I want to remind ourselves is that beekeeping in under the Indo-Israel Agricultural Project is about sharing knowledge from Israel, tailoring it to India, but within this remembering very clearly what is the objective. And uh, as, as much as we progress our activity, the objective is to generate quality honey. And from this, we need a little bit to step out of the way honey production is being done conventionally and see how we can improve it. Many of the things that we are seeing is that we will achieve better result if we stick to a clear way of uh, hive management, of beekeeping hive management and uh, extract honey when it is ripe and not when it has a high percentage of uh, humidity in it. And by this, we will be able to avoid any processing of honey, any heating of the honey, and therefore the portfolio, the taste, the aroma of the honey will be premium and very good. And by doing this management, I feel we can bring something new to the beekeeper. So with this, I want to leave you and hand it over to Chaim, but maybe just before that, uh, I hope uh, Dr. Biel Sarawat is with us. And if so, I invite you to give some opening remarks in a very short manner. So uh, Dr. Sar Saraswat, please. Okay. So I see that uh, Dr. Saraswat is not responding. So I will, uh, in order to enable the flow of the presentation, I will give it to Chaim to take over and to lead us into this uh, uh, interesting and fascinating session. Please, Chaim. Okay. Good afternoon to you, my friends in uh, India. Uh, do you hear me? Ah, I can, I yes, yes. Them? Everything is yes. okay. Uh -huh, okay. Okay. So, uh, for us, it's uh, morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, a very sunny and beautiful day, spring day. Tomorrow we are going with our expectation to have a very winter day with a lot of rain and cold temperature. Uh, we are located in a moshav, in an agricultural village, about five kilometers away from the seashore. Uh, you see the sand, the, the soil is a little bit sandy in this area and the temperature during winter time, very nice, very 
cool temperature which help the bees to pass the winter. You remember a last webinar, we have seen a lot of a new divisions, swarms, swarms. From that time, it was about November. Now we are 16 of February, which is spring. Those divisions, those divisions that are, were in the past in these styrofoam boxes, now they were moved to, to a beehive, to a modern beehive like you have in your uh, center, the same landscape type. I shall open just one. Give me some smoke. You see? This was a few weeks ago. It was a swarm. Now it, it's a new division. It, you see, it's full with 10 frames. We had a new foundation just a few days ago. You see, it was constructed by the bees and the queen, she laid a lot of eggs here. Okay? I'm happy with, with this situation. I show you another one, another new frame that we introduced some, uh, maybe two weeks ago. You see the sealed wood area? Nice, a nice reserve of food here. Nice, nice reserve of food. You see, very heavy, very heavy comb. This is the, this is honey, not for us. This is honey which the bees need in order to survive. Okay? Without this honey, the colony will not be able to develop and to build the population. You see the uh, area of, of wood, nice. Now I would like to explain something, something. It will be a little bit theoretical. The population within a beehive depends on two main factors. One is the number of born bees per 24 hours. How many bees will develop from the brood? They will emerge from the brood within 24 hours. Minus, how many bees will die? They will finish their life within this period. If we take a population in this high, which is about, estimation, about 20,000 bees, 20,000 bees, and we divide the large span of a bee, is about, let's say, 50 days. 50 days, which means seven weeks. 20,000 divided by 50 means 400 bees will die within a day. Okay, now, to, to uh, evaluate how many bees will emerge every day, I have to count the total area of seal brood, the total area of the seal brood in the colony. I don't want to waste too much time to, to count it. I can tell you that in such a colony, we have about 25,000 cells with seal brood, means that within 12 days, 12 days, uh, 25,000 new bees will be born. If we divide 25,000 into 12, means that 2,000 bees will be able to emerge here within a day. Again, 25,000 
divided by 12, which is around 2,000, minus 400, which are dying, the balance is 1,600. 600, 1,600 bees, which is the balance. So you can imagine in such a situation, what will happen with such a colony? A colony which the population is so big, if we shall not, if we shall not put a new super, the colony will swarm. They will not stay. They will live with the old queen and we shall lose the honey crop. Now, what, I'm go what we are going to do, I'm going to explain how we are going to put the second super to a colony. Now, if you pay attention, you see a beehive which have got super some days ago, okay? And some others which are just on the brood nest only. Now we shall open just uh, a colony of, give some smoke here. The first one, this one have got a super about less than a week ago. Less than a week ago, you see, the second super is, there are some bees, oh, not a lot, the foundation that we, we gave, usually we give two, three foundations in the super to keep the young bees, to keep the young bees in the super, to keep them busy in, in, secre in, in the secretion of new wax and construction of new cells. I remove the super, the queen excluder. Now, I would, I, in front of the beehive, I would like to explain uh, uh, the purpose of the queen excluder. The queen excluder, as you use in India, is the same queen excluder. We, we are uh, uh, leaving the queen inside the nest. She will not be able to lay in the super. Now I would like to, to bring the question. The queen in the nest, she has enough, enough space for egg laying or she needs more space uh, in the nest? The answer is yes. She has enough space for egg laying. She has enough space, and if if you want, I can prove it by a small calculation. The number of cells of wood in the moment is around thirty thousand cells from the stage from the stage of young wood eggs larvae and pupa. Altogether is about 30,000 cells. If we divide, if we divide the 30,000 into 21 days, which is the one generation, means around, two, again, we come again to the number of 2,000. Of 2,000 eggs, which the queen lays every, every day. Okay, now what will happen in the day of the 22nd? In the 22nd, the first 2,000 bees will be adult and they will emerge. When they emerge, immediately the bees will clean the cells and they will, uh, and the queen, she will lay eggs. So routine was. In, in the routine, she will be able to lay always enough eggs in the nest 
and no need to add anything. Just you put the super with two foundations, three foundations, three foundations, and that's it. Now, Guy uh, Bola Auto. Now I would like to show you the super that we are going to give to the bees. This, the super has combs. From the last, from the last harvest, found, we put two foundations, one, two foundations, and I'm going to give it to the colony. Okay. Okay. Yep. Again, the excluder, excluder. I remove the top. Ah. Look here. When I open the hive, I see the colony supposed to be very strong, and they are constructing combs in the top filler means that the colony is very very strong i remove the top feeder okay now before before putting the 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 super remember that we are we are treating again varroa with this technology, this pieces of wood with a med medicament with amitraz again against varroa. These sticks will be inside the beehive for six to seven weeks. Okay? And and it will reduce the population of Varroa mites to close to zero. I put the super on top of it, on, on top of it. I do hope that you will be able to watch this hive several times more within the next one or one and a half months, okay? The rest of the bees, the, the bees which are very crowded in the nest, they will go up and they will start to populate the brood nest. And by that, we are able to reduce the, the density of bees in the inside the nest, which is the one main factor of swarming. Our main objective of keeping bees is to produce honey. A colony which swarm usually it will produce the colony will produce very low production, close to zero. Our expectation from such a colony, normal and good colony, 50 to 80 kilograms of honey. And believe me, that within the very short time, it will get one more, two more, and three more, maybe three or four more supers, all will be full with honey. The honey which we remove, the honey which we remove, only the honey which will the bees will gather here in the super. And now, I would like to introduce, I would like to introduce, come on, come, come here.
a guy is my son-in-law. O- officially, guy is the owner of the apiary. In the past, this apiary was belonged to me. Due to chronology, I became old. I gave the apiary to my daughter and my son-in-law. Now he is the beekeeper. And I am the advisor, or if you want, I am one of the emplo- employees in the apiary. I am doing, I'm working with the bees, and I like this kind of a job. So I, I, I know very well beekeeping, and I also work with the bees 12 months a year, always with the bees, day and night, day and, and night. Now this colony will get a, a super telemoto. You see, he come with the with the super. Okay. Now he will arrange. He will arrange the frames. I'll show you. The, we use in the apiary. We use plastic, also plastic frames, very strong. A new foundation. We we put in the super instead of ten, we put only nine. Why we put nine? We put nine because we would like that the honeycombs will be wide. It will be thick, so it it will facilitate. Dramatically, the process of uncapping and the process of extraction. Okay, we go on. You see, this is not ready. It, this is not the time to put a super. We should wait. The criteria for having one more super is population which covered 10 frames and seven out of them are combs with brood. Just we see here, what is this situation? You see, this is honey. This honey and reserve of pollen. Okay. This is a new egg laying again and pollen. This is wood. So we have one, two, three, four, five. Five. Maybe this is six. No, only five. Only five, so this is not the time we, or maybe less, even four. But this is not good. Then you shut okay? Only, only uh, four comes with good. So we should wait, maybe two weeks, and they, it will get. What can be the result of putting a super too early? We say, okay, so what? If we put the super too early, we can harm the colony dramatically because one of the criteria is to help the bees to maintain the temperature. So if we give one an empty super and it will be little bit cold outside. This is what we are going to have in the next two or three days. It will harm the colony. So it's better to leave it as it is and to wait, to wait, and it will come the time that we'll have one more super. Okay. 
Well, let's let's open that to the situation. Beautiful. You see, the, the picture here is very interesting. You see the bees are filling the comb with a new honey and they leave and, uh, at the center an area which they expect that the queen will come to lay eggs. But due to the fact that they have queen excluder, she will not be able to reach that area. Okay, and 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 it's very important that we get uh, uh, in the super only honey and without any brood. You should remember that in order to get a good You can see there is a technical problem. Ora Shomat at mute. I see there is a technical problem in the field here. Chaim is back. Please, Chaim. Not yet. I see. Chaim, you're on mute. You will. So bear with us a few seconds until we finally resolve this issue. Hello? Yes, Chaim, this is good. Okay, show me. Okay. Ora, Ora, you have to, when we put mute, you have to release the mute for us because we can't do it ourselves. Okay? okay. Actually, what, what we are doing in Apirin right now is just the normal procedure in the Apirin. It is not for you, for demonstration. This is the normal way how we keep the bees. Our plan was to do today, today, we are moving within the apiary to put, to put a new super. Uh, and actually that this is what we are doing. I, I, we are doing now myself and my son-in-law. My son-in-law, his name is Guy, Guy Shkuri, his wife, is my what my daughter one of my daughters i hope i do hope that he is very happy with his job okay you see i can i can tell you without to uh to be too busy just my, my experience that such a colony uh, has enough brood, we usually, usually I lift it a bit. It's impossible to move it because it's so heavy. I put the queen excluder 
and the and the super. Again, she put them in the right order. Okay. Bolly pop guy. Let's go on. Okay. Excellent, excellent. You see the honey. As, as, as I said before, the honey in the nest, never, never we touch it. We, it belongs to the bees and we it will stay like that. Should, they will take the honey the surplus of honey from the nest, and they will put it in the super. I removed the, the sticks in order uh, to, I, I need the queen extruder, in order to, to uh, get free from the medicament against the varroa, which is, which is a pesticide. The name of the pesticide for your knowledge is Amitraz. It's very known, very well known in the, uh, between the beekeepers. Now, you see, this is not populated. Wait. I think, yes, we put well populated with enough wood, put the queen excluder, the new super. The combs in the supers are old combs on the last harvest, we store we store the the old combs in the refrigeration in the big containers that once per one per month we reduce the temperature to zero or minus one. So without any chemicals, we are it's protected from wax mold. So when we put the super, most of the combs are ready to be used by the bees. They don't have to construct it again. So we save a lot of power from the bees and we get more honey. Because as you know, in order to secrete one kilogram of wax, 
the bees consume a kilo, uh, sorry, in order to, to produce one kilogram of quark, bees consume 10 kilograms of honey. So if you we supply them with combs which are ready, so we save it. You see, you should, re you should remember the word in Hebrew, Metsuyan. Metsuyan is very beautiful. What, what do you say? Uh, we tell, yes. הבסמל שלך היה למטה, תוריד אותו, לא תקבל עקיצות. בסדר. Um, now, many, many beekeepers in the world, they don't accept the idea having queen excluded immediately. They prefer to put the second super without queen excluder. So the queen Usually she go up to continue laying eggs in the super. And, and they think that this is one of the, one of the techniques of preventing swarming. This is not true. As I uh, tried to explain before, the queen has enough space for egg laying in the nest. When you when when the queen goes up to continue laying eggs and in the super, it needs another activity in the apiary of taking finding the queen and forcing her to go down and then to put the extruder. We call it in the language of beekeepers late queen extruder. Uh, uh, Beekeepers in the world working like that, I can't say that they 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 succeed they are succeeding more than the usual technique of beekeeping. This is what you saw here. This is a part of the story because later on, later on, we shall put one more super, sometimes a shallow super depends on our expectation to have more honey. Um, uh, beekeepers, they are using the fact that the construction of new combs in the nest is very rapidly. So within the period from now up to the beginning of the flow, 
they will uh, replace, they will change five to six combs from the nest. They put the brood in the second super, and instead of the brood, they will put five, six new foundations. New foundations, so they will renew the combs, the combs in the nest. This is very effective, but you should remember this is a very time consuming job. It takes about 15 minutes, 15 minutes to go to a colony and to do this operation, to remove the second super, to go to the, to the nest, to find the right combs, to shake the bees, because we don't want to take the queen from the nest, and then to build it, to build the colony again. And so you can imagine that you are very, very, uh, it's very, very time consuming and you are not able to reach the colonies at the right time. And this is a very key, very key issue because one, the main problem during this season is swarming. You know, it's not nice to say swarming is a problem because swarming is not a problem. Swarming is the way of reproduction of bee colonies in the nature. This is the only way that the bees can reproduce and to repair a new colony. But we, as beekeepers, we would like to produce more honey. So we are fighting against swarming. So you should reach the beehive, the colony, at the right time, not to do things too early, not to do things too late. If you, if you do it too late, they will start constructing queen cells and they will swarm. Remember what we talked some months ago that we talked about breeding. Requeening, requeening is one of the main factors for preventing swarming. Also here, we have been here about November and we killed the old queens. We produce a new division in dot hives that you see over there, the, the styrofoam boxes. And now we are in, in the position that those swarms are uh, the best bee colonies in our apiary. What, what is here? What about these two? If something is not clear, you may ask. Oh, no, 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 no. Great. So, so, okay. This uh, while uh, Chaim is moving, uh, ah. I would like to ask uh, Dr. Bilu if you can first of all address what uh, Chaim was presenting. And then I know you have a presentation of your activity. So uh, then we will move to your presentation. Uh, Chaim, is this okay with you? That uh, Dr. Bilu will uh, ask a few questions on behalf of the team? Yes, please, Dr. Bilu. First of all, Good afternoon to all. I am audible. I can't hear you. Yeah, you are audible. We can hear you, but you need to speak a little bit louder. Good afternoon, Ham. Good afternoon, Dr. Bilu. How are you? I am fine, thank you. I am very fine. I am very happy because, you know, as you know, 
We are not here every day and not every week. Once per one and a half week, about 10 days, two weeks. So when, when I come here and I see that we are succeeding and the colonies look very nice, I am very optimistic about the future. Thank you, thank you. First of all, I want to know, uh, during the super, you are putting super, with yes. eight, nine, nine frames in, uh, yes. at once. Not yeah. two, three, if, we, if we, we put two, three frames and add another one, it is better or put all no, the frames no, no. at one time? You see, in our operation, we would like to do uh, operations efficiently. Efficiently, because as I said, we are not here every day. So I, there is no any uh, uh, benefit or advantage to the fact that you put three and a week after you put more three and so. Immediately you put the nine and it's ready. You don't have to work more. You see, and things happen in the apiary very, very rapidly. If you come here, uh, let's say today is uh, Tuesday, you come on Sunday, just four days from now, you would not believe that this is the situation. I have said something about the flowers. Most of the flowers that you see <coughs> will provide pollen to the bees. We don't have to feed them with pollen supplements and no substitutes. It's enough pollen in the nature, okay? But when the temperature increases within the, the spring, the, uh, it will start to appear flowers which provide nectar. So you may ask the nectar where, the, where it comes from. So we have two main sources of nectar here, big sources. One is the citrus grove. A lot of citrus here in this area. Uh, you hear you, you are, you, you are not able to look. You see uh, greenhouses with cut flowers and here and there, there are a few uh, citrus groves which will start blooming about 15, 20 March. Let's say about a month or three, three and a half weeks from now. Okay, and during that time, from now on, up to the beginning of the citrus flow, you should keep the colony very strong with enough reserve of honey. So you can reach a situation when the colony uh, uh, build a lot of brood without having enough source of honey to regulate the temperature and the colony will starve. They will, it will starve for that. This is one source of nectar. The second is avocado. There is a big plantation of avocado here in the area. Also a plantation that we are giving pollination service to those plantations of avocado. In, in a ratio of one hive, sorry, two hives per acre, two good hives per acre, which is a lot, which is a lot of bees and the, the pollination is something that we call must, must in avocado, you must bring beehives in that ratio in order to get enough food set. Yes. So it is it is time to start the honey flow now in Israel. No, no. The honey flow, as I've said, it's a matter of about it of course depends on the weather from now on, but we believe it will be about three weeks, three three and a half weeks from now, or maybe one month. And the temperature by, by is... the, pardon? Temperature, how much temperature is there? The temperature, you see, today, today is about, uh, I think, 20, 22, 
22, okay? The activity, the activity of bees is not in a maximum because it's not very high temperature. Tomorrow, the temperature will be about 12 to 14. You know, this is the temperature where the activity is not very high. Tomorrow is going to be winter again. During night, during, night, during night time, during night time, the, here in this area, uh, the temp night temperature is not very cold. It will be about 10, 10 to 12. Uh, but within the bees, no problem. You see, no problem. the bees, due to the fact that they have enough reserve of honey, and this is one of the duties of the bee, beauty of the beekeeper to keep reserve of honey, which bees will consume in order to regulate the temperature. Uh, it will be enough till the beginning of the flow. And then when you get the honey, it will be pure honey. Not honey comes from the, from the sugar. Honey comes from the flowers, from the flowers, honey, delicious honey and Good, honey. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Bilu. Um, Chaim, I suggest if you want, you can now move to the position uh, to sit and listen to the presentation of Dr. Bilu. Yes, I, I want to present. Yes, so uh, Ora, yes. can you enable uh, Dr. Bilu to present the presentation? Yes, just a moment. Thank you. Dr. Bilo, please. Yes, it is visible. Yes, can you please say uh, full uh, vision of uh, PPP? Presentation. Full screen, yeah. It's okay? Yes. So, this is about uh, the progress review of uh, IBDC Ramnagar. This is an Indo Israel project and it was established in 2017. And uh, it is completed nearly three years. Uh, the activity wise progress is like this we have produced super beehives with full super and shallow super around 15000 beehives we have produced uh, we have manufactured here and distributed to the farmers or beekeepers of haryana and other states we have also processed we have processing unit and processed uh, around uh, one lakh uh, kg of honey in our uh, at our center. And in uh, testing laboratory, we have tested 321 sample in our laboratories. We have manufacturing unit for Comsit Foundation, and we have manufactured one lakh thirty seven thousand comb seeds and uh, distributed to the farmers and beekeepers of Haryana states. Honey production uh, year wise, uh, this is 1300, 1200 and this year up to January, we have produced 1600 kgs of honey. And regarding queen bees, we are producing and increasing year wise. Uh, during the first year, we produced only 52 queens, and during second year, we have produced 108 queen bees. And up to January, we have produced 145 be queen bees. And uh, now the season is uh, uh, coming now, February up to March, we can produce more queen bees. And our main emphasis is to produce the good quality queen bees and to give to the beekeepers. We are also uh, providing trainings to the beekeepers. And we have uh, provided the trainings, uh, scientific beekeeping trainings and advanced training 
in advanced training we are also uh, guiding to the beekeepers regarding the man, uh, development of uh, queen bees by grafting methods and we have uh, conducted webinar this year we have conducted seven webinar this year and uh, total we have covered about 320s participants in training we have covered 1300 participants and um, if you look uh, we have developed our apiary in full super we are producing honey from the super hives not from the brood chamber we we kept all the hives in super and by managing uh, during the dearth period we uh, we kept all the hives in super and this is our good achievement during this season we also uh, uh, kept all the hives in super in full years in bee production we are producing i said that 145 queens this year and uh, we are producing good quality honey uh, queen bees and giving to the beekeepers of haryana state and as i told we established a state of art workshop of, for uh, bee hives manufacturing and we are manufacturing here the uh, kelwood super hives and uh, we are providing to the beekeepers of haryana state and uh, uh, other state also these are two upcoming project at ibdc we are going to establish one honey trade center from here we want to sell all the honey which are producing in haryana state we are uh, going to establish a center and the trader will buy the honey from the center we also want to include the honey in bhavantar barpai yojana which is uh, our uh, state government scheme in which we compensate to the beekeepers uh, below the minimum spot price and second we are going to establish a quality control laboratories including all the tests including nmr test under now newly launched scheme and bhn and it will be around 200 uh, rupees of 200 millions these two issues or technology we want to expect from the israeli israel the one first one is multiplication and rearing technology for bumblebee it is pending because we have submitted the non paper draft in uh, march as uh, required by the embassy and uh, now the it is pending at uh, your own level na? second uh, we want the commercial production of bee venom and royal jelly technology because uh, it is not uh, the beekeepers are and we are doing but uh, it is uh, the the equipment is not uh, satisfactory or not up to the mark Secondly, the technology for production is not up to the mark in India. So we expect from the expert or from the Israel, we see they can help us. Thanks Thank for you. your kind attention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Bilu. I would, I would like to address uh, a few points. So uh, I would appreciate if both you uh, and uh, Dev, please write down the different action items as I uh, identified, and anything will be taken forward because we are a team. Uh, so we talked before, now we're talking and we'll talk also after. So uh, this is as an input. I would say, and I would like to address two points at the same time. I feel that the knowledge transfer that we're doing today together with Chaim Efrat and the exhibition that you showed us of the very uh, fascinating value chain that you are producing, it is very strong. I want to make sure it is all backed up with a working plan for the long run. That Ramnagar IBDC Center of Excellence 
is really uh, putting a very focused target on what it is aiming to achieve and having in place the activities to achieve it. So if it is generating knowledge, if it is demonstrating the knowledge, or if it is uh, disseminating the knowledge. So always three pillars of activity, every center, including IBDC must be very clear that it is moving. So I want to see a work plan for the next three years for IBDC. Now within this work plan, in my opinion, and I want to hear your uh, reaction, Dr. Bilu, mm -hmm. I feel the honey quality is a major area that we need to focus because from the quality, we derive many uh, activities. The ability to, uh, uh, to do queen rearing is one. The ability to really know the management of a hive from beginning to end, from super flow, honey flow, and all of these aspects are components within a honey quality. And at the end, it is about when do we extract honey? How do we extract the honey? So how do we generate the protocol? How do we demonstrate it, demonstrate in our center of excellence? And how do we bring it to the uh, beekeeper level? So this is my request that we actually aim to this aspect. Yeah, what is your reaction, Dr. Bello? Yes, we, we are working on the in enhancement of quality of uh, uh, our honey because we are providing subsidy on buckets, bottles, food grade buckets. We are promoting these type of activities in Haryana and uh, uh, also by uh, putting the super hives and extraction of honey from the super. Mm -hmm. We are uh, giving the trainings to the beekeepers and promoting in this type of activities. Okay, this is good. And are you putting in place a protocol guideline uh, that is uh, given to the farmer on all the different steps on how to do beekeeping uh, management? Yes, we have prepared uh, all the protocols and submitted to the MASO. Excellent. It is uh, pending at, uh, from the expert, no? from your expert. Okay. So I will... Uh, suggestion no, of no. Your expert. No. Yes, please, Chai. Uh, I would like to add something. Please. Uh, I agree with you 100% about you, what you said about quality of honey. Uh, you are holding the bull by the horns. This is how we say it in Hebrew. Uh, we, have, we have been in this, this situation some dozens of years ago. And I, uh, what I did, I prepared a short video clip about honey harvesting. And within the clip, I put all the parameters which affect honey, the honey quality. So if you are interested in honey quality, you look in the video and you see, you see the main points. So I think the, the center should uh, think about this. It's not a big problem nowadays <laughs> to produce a video clip. Video clip can be also in the, uh, in the TV or the public or agricultural TV, or during, during uh, demonstration days, or meetings, or so on. So it's very easy me media of transferring information and know-how. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would like to move... Helpful. If, if you sign now, it will be helpful for us. Okay, Chaim, if you can share with us a clip or the... The, the script of the clip, I will uh, translate it to English and share with Dr. Bilu. Yes, thank you. Uh, first of all, I, I have to send you the video, the video about honey harvesting. As I told you, 
it's about uh, uh, 35 years old. So it's not a modern one, because you know the the the, the video tools within these 35 years are completely different. Now you can with this cellular phone you can make a, a clip. Okay, so yes. to build a good one, you have to think about this and go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. So this is clear. I will move to the second topic, which is for me a gap that I very much would like to address together with you, Dr. Bilu. And this is a flora. I feel we need to give some kind of a highlight for the connection between the beekeeping and the flora. And here there are two ways of looking at it. Is moving the hive to where the flora is existing and utilizing the flora for the bees. But the other side is utilizing the bees for the horticulture farmers. So to show the synergy of bees coming to the orchard and increasing the productivity. I really want to have this synergy. I feel this is something that we should emphasize and we should bring together because when we will have all the horticulture farmers supporting your initiative, we will have a very strong support. And I think it will also show the synergy and the sustainability of the importance of beekeeping in our ecosystem. So I would in, uh, encourage you two things. One is again, build and generate the knowledge. Say exactly which type of flora and when do we have in Haryana? And actually build a calendar of flora. This is one. Second is demonstrate it. Actually show how you are utilizing and, 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 and uh, optimizing the movement of the hive to the right flora field, or by moving it, or by putting uh, most of it in one area. And demonstrate it also by having all of your center, IBDC, covered with flora. Every place you can put flora, put flora. Around it, inside the center, bring children to see it, bring pupils, bring uh, beekeepers. It should be a, a, a actual value in, in IBDC and around it. So this is a demonstrating and then training on flora. Make sure you are training beekeepers, make sure you are training uh, horticulture farmers, not to spray when the hive is in the orchard. Different small and big things that make the difference. So this was a point I wanted to raise and I ask you, uh, we gave you at the time a Israeli guideline on how we are doing it. If you need to translate it, if you need any help, tell us and we will be there for you. I am moving to topic number three, which is villages of excellence. We have announced and we are starting to implement the new initiative of Israel and India, which is moving from a center and growing into the villages of excellence. Haryana, in my opinion, is going to be one of the leaders of this initiative because IBDC, together with Karnal and Ladwa, three centers have been requested to identify 30 villages. And I would like to see how IBDC is focusing on these 30 villages. What I would very much like to understand is can we have beekeepers in every village? And what is the type of model we can implement? Maybe we can, in, we can encourage every village to grow the flora. Maybe we can put in place an extraction machine that will extract the ripe honey in the right time, but prevent any processing. So we preserve the quality. And this is the type of things I would like to see. Of course, capacity building. How does IBDC train beekeepers in these places? 
So uh, villages, in my opinion, should be the highlight of the three year work plan ahead. Uh, I did note two things that I have. One is pollination. We must carry on with the pollination. It will not only be how to propagate uh, or, or do rearing for the bumblebee. It will be how do we bring the value chain of pollination? How do we propagate it? How do we uh, make a product out of the bumblebee? How do we create a hive suitable for bumblebee? How do we carry the bumblebee to the greenhouse? And uh, what is a protocol? How do we demonstrate? There are many things we need to, to answer. And what do we know already is that anything to do with pollination will come out of a PPP. It will, re will really and, uh, need all of us to work very much together because us as governments, we will need to identify a private sector a solution provider. And this PPP, private public partnership, we will need to tailor it. And your letter that we have received is a very important first step but it is a very uh, uh, challenging uh, roadmap, but this is why we are here. I think we should take this challenge and uh, I acknowledge that the responsibility is in our hands. So thank you for, for taking the, the first step. And the last point is a bee venom. Here I will need you and uh, Chaim to guide me. What exactly are we talking about? What is the technology? What is the solution? what is a challenge and what do we need to bring. So I suggest we take it separately, uh, maybe even as a discussion, the three of us, and uh, you will explain and uh, we can take it forward. But I know it's my responsibility to coordinate the call. Uh, so I think I am covering all the points that you have raised and the things that I have uh, thought I wanted uh, to see forward. Uh, so I finish here. Uh, is uh, Dr. Uh, Saini with us here today? I think he's not with us. Okay, so I, uh, I know that uh, this was a request from his side to promote pollination. I acknowledge we need to, and uh, it is uh, on my responsibility to take it forward. So I will update accordingly uh, you, Dr. Bilu and Dr. Saini where we are standing. So we are getting close to Mama. the end of Please. Dan, Dan, show me, Muti? Okay, show me. Okay. Uh, you say something about the uh, bee venom. Yes. Bee venom is a big issue. The, the main uh, constraint of bee venom production is demand. What to do with the venom? And I would like to tell you a story. I am in the business of bee venom, uh, maybe 40 years. And we invited the very well known worldwide professor of bee venom. His name is Charles Braz. He's American. He passed away some dozens of years ago, 20 maybe. And I'm talking about a period without internet, without mails, only letters. And I, we, I, we have got the, the old information from him. But the main point that he mentioned in his letter, okay, you produce Vivenom. If you find the market, let me know. And we didn't find the market. It's very difficult to find the market, a uh, 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 market which is consuming bee venom in a regular basis, in a small quantity. We are not talking about production of tons of venom. We are talking about production of few kilograms of venom. Kilogram of venom, it's 25,000 US dollars. Very expensive. 
And it's not a big problem to, to produce it, but to sell it is a problem. So you may start with this problem to how, how to sell the venom. What about royal jelly? Huh? Royal jelly, I'll tell you what about royal jelly. Because I, any country are doing the business of royal jelly, no? like China. Royal jelly is okay. It's okay. You, in order to produce royal jelly, you need a very strong beehives and very skillful people. Very skillful people in this aspect. And the Chinese are the best in the world. You can do the same. You can do the same as the Chinese are doing in production of royal jelly. High demand, the price is a little bit low, but it's a good idea. So what we can uh, decide is that we will conduct some kind of training for both. And uh, Dr. Bill, what I need is from your side to really define uh, the demand driven of both. So we will know that actually this has a market and a, a demand. <clears throat> Because the technology for preservation of royal jelly is na, not available. Okay. Not uh, at par with us. So, Chaim, what we need is a training, a skill training to how to do it, the technology, if there is any. What, what we can do, we have to pray that, that this uh, horrible uh, situation, COVID 19, will disappear and we should be able to start going out. You see? Yes. I don't know what is the situation in India in uh, Corona, but here we are feeling very bad. Hey, you know, so, uh, uh, and, hey, and, and um, yesterday, I, do, I don't know, Dan, if you have listened to the Prime Minister yesterday, about his interview. It was in the television. But, but uh, um, it is good news in, in India. There is no much problem of COVID. No? Oh, I am very happy to hear that. But yes. here... You come to India. Of, you come to India. Number of dead, people who died from Corona, up to now, is 5,400 people. Yes. And we are we are we are population of nine million people. Yes, definitely. But I hope now uh, things will improve with the vaccine. But uh, definitely, when you will be able to come, then we will conduct the training, uh, or consider a, a different uh, aspect. But uh, but this is a very valid point, and we will uh, talk about the the possibilities. Uh, so, what I would like to suggest that at this stage, after we covered a, a range of topics with uh, quite a few action items, what we will do is actually put in place a document that will summarize this webinar uh, and mostly highlight what we need to do. And when I say we, every action item, we will define who is doing it, what is the timeline uh, and uh, what is the outcome that we are uh, looking to achieve. Thank you. Uh, if we will have any gap or any doubt, we will discuss together and we will finalize. And uh, as I am saying that, please, Dr. Bilu, if you feel there is anything that is left uh, unaddressed that you wish to promote, if there are things you wish to prioritize higher then other things, please don't hesitate, talk to us. Let's put it in place and let's uh, promote it accordingly. Uh, and let's make a difference. So at this stage, uh, I would like to ask if anyone else has any questions before we conclude the webinar. Well, before... Please, Chaim. Uh, before you conclude, you see today is 6th of February, about the, the second week of March, between 10, 10 to 15, or maybe uh, some days before, come again and to look 
again to the colonies that you have seen now. It's very nice to see the big difference between the situation now and the situation within three weeks. Mm -hmm. So we have to arrange another webinar within that period. Okay, Dev, please write down the date and let's see uh, that we actually make this. I, I, shall tell, I shall tell you first. Okay. Sure Understood. done, thank you. Yes. And uh, Dr. Bilu, by the way, one of the things I would like to do is do the, the same type of uh, follow-up here in uh, Ariana to see that we are following the advancement of uh, supers, the honey flow, and we can see stage after stage how we reach to the point where it is a ripe honey that we can extract and doesn't require any processing. So uh, yeah. maybe we should document this here in Ariana with footage, with uh, some parameters that we can quantify, uh, bring it to the laboratory, show the differences. Maybe we can build something that, uh, not maybe, let us, let us build. So Dev, okay. also this, let's do here in uh, IBDC too. So uh, okay. with this, uh, Dr. Bilu, uh, Mr. Chaim, uh, I would like to conclude the webinar. So unless you have any inputs, I will uh, bring the closing uh, to, okay. to the webinar. So thank you, uh, first of all, Ora and Yuval uh, from Shfaim. Yuval was uh, taking the video, Yuval El Azar and Ora was sitting in the uh, center itself, enabling the platform, this virtual platform to take place. Thank you, both of you. Thank you, Chaim, for leading together with uh, uh, your, the husband of your daughter, which I forgot his name, Leo, I think. Guy, no? guy, guy, guy. Yes. So thank you, Guy and uh, Chaim, for uh, uh, really leading this hands-on uh, field visit to see the beehives. Uh, it was fascinating. Thank you, Dr. Bilu, to you and your team for joining and uh, sharing your uh, achievements and the challenges that we need jointly to address. I am ensuring you we are working together and we will do it jointly. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for all of you here in India, joining, listening. Uh, if you have any follow-up that you wish to take forward, please feel free to communicate directly with us. Our uh, phone, email, uh, and door is always open for you. So thank you friends here in India. Thank you Dev for enabling this webinar to happen on your side. And uh, thank you for representatives of uh, NBB for joining. And uh, next week we have a big event. We will start an extension uh, state course for the Hindu-Israel villages of excellence. Another, another very important milestone for our cooperation. So uh, we are very much looking forward and we will definitely follow up on today's action items. So thank you all and see you soon and keep uh, safe. Bye-bye.